All right, so we're talking about uh, the kingdom of God here, and we're talking about um, kind of the purpose of, of life and uh, kind of the end of the end of the world and your eschatology, a fancy word for the what you believe about the end of the world. So um, I'm calling this next section. If if we believe that, you know, um, maybe it's about more than just dying and going to heaven. Maybe there's maybe there's a little bit more. Maybe this story is a little more more nuanced. Um, I like to call this section Eden, um, Kingdom Kingdom One Point Zero, King, Kingdom One One Hundred One. <laughs> uh, the first version of the kingdom is Eden, and so here's the story with Eden: is um, in the very beginning, God creates man, uh, or sorry, God creates and He calls uh, that creation and man whom He creates, and He calls it good. So the world He creates world the world calls it good, which is, you know, again, illustrated by, God's illustrated by the, uh, the little Trinity symbol there. So God creates, he creates the world and he creates man in it and he calls it good. Okay. So then what happens is that God dwells with man, oops, in Eden. So this is a little bit different than the first story that we were, that we were saying, because immediately what you have is you have a God that comes down to earth and dwells with man. So that's a little bit different than God being up here in heaven and man being down here and there's being there's a separation. Originally, God created the earth, he put man in the earth and then he dwelled he dwelt with man together with him. So he dwells with man in Eden together with him. Then um Adam Adam's apple pun there, but Adam eats the apple and it separates him from God. So God is still there. God's still with man, but because man decides to eat that apple, it separates him from, from God. So what happens next? So then because, um, because of that, that sin, because Adam eats the apple, he is cast out of that garden and he spreads sin, which entered through that, that apple to the rest of humanity. Um, notice now that God is still here dwelling on the earth um, but there's just that distance between them is growing. So then what happens is that God sends Christ um, from himself to man preaching a kingdom. So if you read the, the, new, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and, and the prophecies preceding all of those, what you see is that Christ is sent from God, from heaven. He came from heaven. Um, and he was preaching to man a kingdom. Jesus talked about this thing called the kingdom in all of his parables. He talked about this thing called the kingdom. And what happens is he proves the truth of that message through miracles. He's crucified, buried, and then he resurrects. So this is, this is a, a little bit different because it's not just, Jesus didn't come saying, hey, uh, you know, I'm here because I want you to get the heck out of this earth that's gonna burn. And I want you to be with me and my father with, and my father in heaven. Like that's part of it. He talked about, hey, I want you to be with me and my father in heaven. But he doesn't talk about how, hey, the world's going to burn up and I just want to get you out of here. Like there's more to the message than that. Those Again, those are elements, but there's more to it than that. So he preaches this mes message about the kingdom. He confirms the truth of that message and he illustrates what the kingdom is like through miracles and ultimately through his resurrecting from the dead and beating death. So then what happens is his cross becomes our crown and the kingdom becomes our commission. In other words, Christ ascends, but then he, what he does is he doesn't go, hey, I want you to be up here with, with me. He takes the cross, death, and that cross becomes the authority that we can then carry and use and it becomes like a sword. I have the illustration there, like a sword. Like the cross becomes like our sword, like a weapon for us. It becomes an offensive weapon instead of a weapon of death to us. And, and he commissions us for the kingdom. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll be with you to the end of the age. And he commissions these guys to go and like do stuff on the earth. And then on top of it, is that here's where it gets really cool. Eden 1.0, Kingdom 101. At first, if you remember the very first slide, God was dwelling with man alongside him in the garden. Well then, here's what, here's what gets crazy, is that then God dwells in man after Christ ascends. 
to build the kingdom and Eden 201, to build the new Eden on earth. So Christ ascends, resurrects, and then he sends his spirit to dwell inside of us, which is even better than dwelling alongside of us. So you have God with man originally in Eden, and they're dwelling together, and they're talking and walking together in the garden. Sin happens, they're separated. Then Jesus comes, he's dwelling together with his disciples again. Then he beats death, resurrects, and then he sends his spirit to live inside of man. You can't get any closer than that. You can't get any closer than having his spirit dwelling inside of your body, inside of you, not just with you, not just walking and talking with you, but being one with you. And he, he dwells in man to build, and then in order to give him the power to build that new kingdom that he talked about. Then the story at the end of the age is that Christ completes the kingdom by returning and he destroys sin, but the earth doesn't burn up. Sin and the devil and death are destroyed in a place, but the earth is still around. And that original mandate, which was for man to be fruitful and multiply in Eden is still the original plan. And then man rules the world with Christ at the end of the age. So this is a little bit different, and that mandate is, is called the domin dominion mandate, which is not dominionism, it's not like domination, but it's to be established as a sovereign, kingly ruler, master, governor, who's responsible for reigning over a designated territory with the inherent authority to represent and embody as a symbol the territory, the resources, and all that constitute a kingdom. So I'll go into this next part about what is a kingdom, what does that actually mean, in a little bit, but um, that's just some food for thought is that your what you believe about the end of the world and about the original design and plan is really, really important. And if you believe that the original story is that, you know, when you get saved, that God just wants to get you out of earth to get you to heaven, you're not going to live that great of a life on earth. But if your understanding is more nuanced and you believe, wait, like, yeah, I'm going to go and dwell with God, you know, at the end. But there's more to it than that, that there's a purpose for me here on this earth now. That's a little bit more. That's a little bit. There's more purpose to that. There's more joy in that. And I'll get into more of that in the next session.